What's going on guys? EA should be releasing their player ratings for NHL 25 very soon. So I figured I would give my predictions for the top 10 rated players. Now, this is what I think EA is going to rate these players. This isn't what I would rate them. So starting off here, no surprises. Number one, we have Conor McDavid. 97 overall, high franchise potential. Attribute wise, I would say it's kind of a mix between what I think EA will do as well as what I think they should do. For instance, McDavid just had 100 assists. He better have 99 passing. Like, come on. If they don't give him that, then... What did he even do? And same with the 99 offense awareness. He had that before. Um, poise 99. I think speed 99. I don't really think anyone would be like, oh, that's overrated for McDavid. I think, honestly, it makes a ton of sense. Obviously, defensively, he's probably too highly rated, but you kind of have to do that to get him to that 97. And now next year, guys, number two, we have the guy who just won the Hart Trophy, Nathan McKinnon, coming in at 96 overall. Obviously, coming off an incredible year, hence why he won the Hart Trophy. Medium franchise potential there. I also noticed they changed his X Factor from Ankle Breaker to Unstoppable Force. I put it back on Ankle Breaker. I think that makes more sense. Looking at his stats here, you can see passing 98. Had like 89 assists, I think, so not quite 100. But um, McKinnon, obviously, very good skater too. 97 speed excel. Great shot, hands, uh, probably a little bit better defensive player than McDavid. Physically, I'd say he's probably similar to McDavid, but again, overall, an incredible player. I don't really think anyone's going to argue with this one either. And now number three here, guys, we have the other guy who put up 100 assists this season, that being Nikita Kucherov, actually won the Art Ross Trophy for most points. Obviously, I think if McDavid should have 99 passing, so should Kucherov. Now, having said that, McDavid, of course, won overall higher because he's a better skater. He probably plays a bit more defense, even though he doesn't play much. Kucherov doesn't play much at all, and still, I had to give him 94D awareness to get him to that 96. Solid shot on him. Uh, physically there, you know, sometimes takes the bad penalty or whatever, but usually not throwing too many hits or anything. So again, I think Kucherov, you know, looked at his point total last year. Tough to argue this one as well. And now next year, guys, coming in at number four and the highest rated defenseman in the game, we have Kale McCarr. I feel like most people would agree McCarr is the best defenseman in the NHL. So that's why he's 95 overall here with Francis Potential. I thought about even maybe making him 96, but I feel like those top three forwards kind of showed last year that, you know, they are on another level, at least in terms of point production. So looking at McCarr's stats here, obviously he can do it all. Great skater, great hands, solid shot for defenseman, very good defensively. Physically, you know, he's not Victor Hedman or anything, but he's not Nathan Gerby either. I feel like, you know, McCarr definitely holds his own physically. So 95 overall for him, I think is what they had him last year. Had a solid season. Wasn't like, you know, 100 points or anything, although that's what he always does in the franchise sim. So clearly EA uh, loves him. We'll see if that's still the case when he's no longer the cover boy next year. And speaking of that, guys, at number five here, I have Quinn Hughes coming at 95 overall as well. I personally would probably have him at 94, but I feel like every year the cover boy gets a bit of a boost. So I've got them uh, having Quinn Hughes here at 95, highly potential, obviously led defenseman in scoring last year. So he's got 97 passing along with all the rest of his hands. Really solid skater there, speed, but especially the agility. Decent shot, not only known for his goal scoring. Physically a little bit worse than Makar. Defensively, it's still very solid. So again, I think Quinn Hughes is probably the better passer than Makar. Skating, I would say, is a tie. And then defensively, I think Makar gets a slight edge. Having said that, you know, Makar does have the better shot. I think he's also a bit better physically, but, you know, Quinn Hughes gets that cover boost, which means he's going to be 95 overall, tying him with Kale Makar. And next year, guys, number six, we have another 95 overall player, the $14 million man, Leon Dreisel, or should I say, like, 112 million, whatever 14 times 8 is. You guys can see there, I've also uh, changed his X Factor from Tate to Tate to Unstoppable Force. I feel like that fits Leon perfectly. So strong in the puck. Uh, you know, you're never going to get off him. Obviously, I uh, got that big body, likes to use it. Speaking of, five star physical there. Skating wise, they gave him 87 speed and excel, which I think is actually probably a little bit too high, but, you know, he is so high rated. It had to be a little bit decent. Uh, of course, too, defensively, like most of these top end forwards, it's higher than it should be, but he's got solid hands, great shot. Dry style, of course, multiple 100 plus point seasons. There's a reason he got paid $14 million. So, and that's why I've got my 95 overall. And now, guys, at number seven, we have the final 95 overall player. That is Austin Matthews. Franchise potential there. Of course, he still has that signature shock and awe zone ability. I think he's got the best shot in the game right now in NHL 24. Probably going to be the case again in NHL 25. 98 slap shot and wrist shot accuracy with 94 for both powers. Uh, 98 offense awareness. Honestly, you could probably make that 99. Defensively, he's actually one of the few high-end forwards that deserves their defensive rating. 93D awareness. You could probably bump that to a 94. 90 shot block. For the last couple of years, he's been uh, the highest or second highest forward in terms of block shots. 95 stick check. Kind of like Dreissel, not the fastest guy, but not the slowest. I think 89 speed's pretty fair. Also has some solid hands physically as well. You know, he's pretty solid. You can see the 89 strength there. Doesn't throw the body a ton, but he can if he needs to. So I think Austin Matthews, 95. Hopefully these fans aren't too upset with that one. And our next year, guys, at number eight, we have the Ageless Wonder, Sid the Kid, coming in at 94 overall. 
I feel like he probably should be a 93, but because, you know, it's Sidney Crosby we're talking about, he gets that kind of legacy boost, plus one, up to a 94. I look at his stats, very solid all around. Uh, pretty similar skating stats, honestly, to Matthews. Defensively, 95 D awareness and stick check. Um, offensively there, 96. He's got 95 passing, solid shot. Physical there, obviously, quite strong. But his body checking and aggressiveness, like Matthews, in the mid-80s. Again, I think Crosby, like I said, is probably a little bit overrated at 94, but when you look at his body of work, you look at the name, I do get it. I think, you know, obviously we've had issues with these kind of ratings in the past with, say, Patrick Kane last year being like the best right winger, or like top three right winger. Alex Ovechkin, I think, too, has been a 90 plus for a bit too long. So curious to see what those two guys are rated. Hopefully um, it's a bit more realistic. I think of the three, Crosby definitely still deserves to be in the 90s. The other two, not so much. And next year, guys, at number nine, we have another 94 overall player coming off a career year. That is Artemi Panarin. Absolutely tore it up i think he finished fourth in scoring uh if you guys look at his stats very solid all around obviously playmaking would be his best ability all 97s but uh solid shot on him too like what do you have last year? he had a lot more goals last year than i remembered him having i'll say that i just checked because i knew it was gonna bug me he had 49 goals one shy 50 and that's definitely the most goals i think panarin scored in his entire career yeah actually it's not even close the dude's never even hit 35 goals before and he came one shy 50 this season so we'll see if we can do that again because of that you know boost his shot rating there Physically, obviously, Panarin's not the most, you know, physically imposing player, but solid skater, great playmaker, solid shot. Uh, defensively, of course, he's getting boosts like the rest of those guys, but I think Panarin, you know, coming off career year, 94 overall for him, makes a ton of sense. And next year, guys, at number 10, we have the guy who finished one spot below Panarin in scoring last year. That is David Pasternak, also 94 overall. Obviously, the year before, 61 goals that contract year, so amazing shot on him. Very good playmaker as well. Uh, he's got good hands. Offense awareness, of course, can be quite high. Defensively, Again, we're, we're boosting it. Skating-wise, I think Pasta's a decent skater, but, you know, low 90s is probably more than fair. Potentially could be even a bit lower than that. Another guy that, you know, physically isn't that imposing or anything. But he's a total offensive package, puts the puck in the back of the net, makes plays. Again, when you're top five in scoring, I think 94 overall is very, very fair. Now, you guys might have noticed, I didn't say he was the last player. That's because we actually have a tie. One more dude, I think, is going to be 94 overall. And that is the other cover boy, Jack Hughes. I have him coming in at 94 overall there, highly potential. Again, kind of like Crosby, I think Jack Hughes should probably be a 93, but... He's on the cover. He's going to get that boost. So I feel like, you know, they get him up to that 94. You look at his stats here. Deakin 98 could probably be 99. Uh, sick hands, though, for sure. Pretty solid shot on him, too. Defensively, Jack Hughes actually is a pretty solid defensive player. So 93D awareness, 94 stick check, I would say is more earned. Skating-wise, pretty quick, but I'd say more than that is just how agile he is. 97 agility. Physically, of course, not going to be very high. Like, you got three-star physical there. But uh, Jack Hughes, obviously, franchise center. He's a cover boy. I think EA might have him coming in at that 94 overall spot. Again, personally, I think probably one overall too high, but not terrible rating. And actually, guys, since we're on New Jersey, I figured I'd give you my prediction for Luke Hughes, the third cover boy. I think EA might have him pretty high rated here. Personally, I'd have him at like an 83, maybe 84. I feel like they'll push him all the way up there to an 85. Elite potential definitely, you know, does make sense for him. Offensive defense, when you guys can see uh, the stats for him there. Good playmaker. He's definitely, you know, the biggest of the three brothers. So uh, physical could probably even be maybe a slightly higher than that. So I feel like those attributes for him make sense. But again, I do think he'll probably come in a little bit too high rated just because he's on the cover with his two brothers. And that's going to do it, guys, for this video. Let me know in the comment section who you think is going to be the top 10 rated players in NHL 25. And hopefully you don't have to wait too long to actually find out the real ratings. If you guys enjoyed this video, leave that thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't. Thank you guys so much for watching. Have a nice day. Goodbye.